This is the very first video that I'm working on for six-gun guitars. This is going to explain the fret bending jig. Um, there's an article for that on the website, sixgunguitars.com, and there are articles. And it's a very simple item, and it consists of a workboard which holds everything on it together, a few bolts um, which hold all the different wheels on here, and four of these little round wheels that are made using a hole saw, or you could cut a maybe a one inch or one and a half inch dowel rod. You can cut it into sections, and you can do the holes that way. Um, the biggest thing to do with the holes and the circles is just to make sure that they're made out of a soft wood because when the frets come through here, there's going to need to be some indentations kind of worn in over time over the first few passes that will groove the wheels so that way it makes sure that the frets stay on there every single time when they go through. Now essentially the way that this works is the frets come in from this angle here and the crank is turned and what happens is because these wheels create a divot inside of here, the frets come in this way, strike this far wheel on the, on the inside here and are forced up and around as the fret wire comes out in a nice curve and I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to do a couple little close-ups on here to the different parts, um, so that way between this and the article for how to build it, it should be very easy to do it. Alright, so now we can see a little bit closer the actual workings of the fret bender. And like I said before, it's just made out of these three wheels here, plus one for the crank, so that way the item can be cranked through, it makes it a little bit easier to work. And again, these wheels are just cut out with a hole saw, really, really easy. And the nice thing about a hole saw is normally it'll have usually about a quarter inch center drill that goes through it as well. So using quarter twenty screws for everything will make it really, really easy to put together and a lot less drilling and working and whatnot. Um, the wheels that go on here, let me take one off here for you, let's take the center crank off. Essentially they go on with a nut in the front and the wing nut on the back and the reason for that is we want the wheels themselves to be able to spin, at least these two outside ones for sure. Now this one doesn't really matter as much, this one needs to be kind of, it's going to wind up being bolted and, and screwed directly to the, to the handle so that way it's movable by the handle, but if it's cranked up against her too hard obviously it's not going to spin. So. The wheels themselves just again consist of the bolt, a couple of washers for spacing, and the nut. And again, all this stuff is explained in the article section on the website. But what happens is these two wheels that are here, when this third one gets on, it causes this, this divot in here. Or if you pass something through here straight, its natural tendency is going to be to go down. But when it strikes this wheel, it's forced back up. And that's what affects the curve on the front wire. And that's what's really important when you're installing fret wire is you want to over curve it just a little bit versus the radius of the fretboard that you're installing. And the reason for that is when you hammer your ends in, you want to hammer your ends in first and then flatten it out and that pushes the tang and the little barbs on the tang into the, fret, into the actual fretboard and then offset just slightly so that way they grip better and your chances of having to do a refret or anything like that in the future are wind up being pretty slim, especially if you use a little bit of glue in there as well. You know, and you can kind of see from the edge here, the angle there, these grooves that are in here line up. And the reason that they all line up is because all the frets going through here have done that over time. Now I'll put the fret wire in upside down with the tang facing up and crank it through like this. Now another thing to show is the, that this wheel over here, the third wheel, this one is what you call the adjustment wheel. The reason it's called that is because it's set into this groove that's on the board here. Now the reason that it's set into a groove is so that it's adjustable. If we move the higher that it's moved, the, the tighter the curve is going to be when the fret wire goes through it. And obviously the lower, the wider the curve is going to be. It's much easier just to do a curve or a slot rather on this thing versus trying to get the hole right and then re-drilling it because once you run the fret wire through and it sinks into these things, it's going to change. So it's best to just run it through a few times so that way you can get it right and do the and do a slot. So I'm going to put this back into the slot. And again with the wing nuts it makes it really nice because adjustment goes really quickly. So I'm going to put that into the slot, and now I'll take a piece of fret wire, and again, you insert the fret wire from this side, and you start the cranking action, and what happens is it grabs it, forces it up against that other wire, and as it goes through, it comes out with a curve. And again, if I move this wheel up a little bit more, I could get more of a curve, but for what I normally do, this type of curve that I've got right here is usually sufficient. So now that one straight fret wire has been ran through and it's now in a nice curve and it's ready to be hacked into segments for installing on a fretboard. Alright, so just to show a little bit more of the curving action, I actually adjusted this wheel up about another quarter inch. And now when we move it through, the curve becomes a bit more pronounced. And this piece was already curved from the last operation, but now when we run it through again, we run it through a little bit tougher, a little bit tougher curve, the piece comes out with a much nicer bend on it. So again, completely adjustable, really nice, easy item. Um, there's luthier supply houses out there that sell these things for anywhere from 90 to 100 bucks. Um, the one that I'm not going to pick on anybody, but the one that you do buy for 90 bucks, it is nice. It's made out of metal. All these guys have bearings in them. I mean, the, the piece here is metal for clamping down. I mean, it's, it's a really nice piece for sure. 
But again, ninety dollars versus everything. Literally everything in here was made in the shop from pieces that are laying around. Everyone's got screws hanging out. I mean, maybe wing nuts or you know something you have to pick up. But screws, a hole saw, a, or a dowel rod, you know, pretty much anything like that. A little piece of scrap board to put it to. All this stuff is readily available in the shop. And again, if I had to go out and buy these things, you might have you know three or four to five dollars into actual materials costs versus again for me it was free because all this stuff was just hanging out in the in the shop. So again, you know, this was a fretbender, and look forward to some other videos on here pretty soon.